Hello everyone welcome back to this channel. This video is part of a series of four videos which are briefly going to discuss about the anatomy of the plant. The main aim of this series is to provide you with a general overview of the subject matter. This presentation is going to discuss about these five key aspects in relation to leaves. Firstly we are going to begin with the general ideas and key features relative to leaves. The reason why the leaves are considered to be one of the most important part of a plant because they help capture the sunlight and converts it into chemical energy. The ability to capture light energy and using it as an energy source is called photosynthesis. To briefly state about the process of photosynthesis it involves trapping the solar energy to convert water and carbon dioxide to glucose, sugar, and oxygen. The plant will use the sugars generated from this process for growth and development. They also play a major role in transpiration which is the movement of water from the roots to the whole plant. Now we are going to moves towards discussing the growth and development of leaves. The leaves of a plant originate as the primordia in the buds. Regardless of the size of the leaf or its form they all begin from the buds. When the leaf is in its primordia stage it has less than 200 cells at present. During this stage of the leaf life cycle they are also beginning to get more responsive towards environmental cues such as temperature, sunlight, availability of water and also plant hormones. These will stimulate the cells to further undergo cellular division. In the time span of a couple of days or weeks the cells would have rapidly multiplied from their initial count of 200 cells to millions of them. By the time the leaf has reached its maturity they must have developed a stalk, and this is also referred to as the petiole. Additionally, they must have their lamina. This is a network of veins otherwise known as the vascular bundle of the plant which consists of both the xylem and phloem. At the base of the petiole we can sometimes also observe a scale-like or thorn-like appendages which are called stipules. Sometimes some leaves may not have a petiole and they said to be sessile. This part of the video will focus mainly on the varied arrangements which are present in the leaf structure. The leaves on the plant are attached to the stem via nodes. The space between the stem and the node region is referred to as the internode. The arrangement of the leaves can exist in three different forms and they are alternate, opposite, and world. In most of the plant species the leaves are arranged in the alternate manner along the stem of the plant. In some plants the leaves are facing one another at the same node giving it an appearance of being opposite one another. Lastly, world occurs when we can observe that there are more than three leaves at one node. Next the arrangement of the veins in the leaf can also vary and they can be either pinnate or palmate in the pinnate leaves we can observe a clear midvein running through the leaf, the midvein is also called the primary vein. From the primary vein there will be a cluster of a faint and delicate secondary veins which are branching out from the midrib. In the palmate leaves we can see several primary veins unlike the pinnate leaves which have just one primary vein. Next, we are going to move forward and discuss about the variations that are naturally present among leaves. There are many different types of leaves based upon their shape, size or texture and based on these properties we can easily distinguish them from one another. The leaves can either be colored or spine-like, they can be tubular, feathery or needle-like. They can also be smooth in texture or even hairy. Some leaves can be poisonous and other can be medicinal. There's a wide and varied range of possibilities and combinations that can be associated with the type of leaf existing in nature. Lastly, we are briefly going to discuss about the internal structures of the leaf when observed through the microscope. This picture shows you the transverse section of the leaf under the microscope. When looking through the lens of the microscope we can observe three distinct regions which is the epidermis, mesophyll, and veins. The epidermis layer is a single layered region which covers the entire surface of the leaf. On the lower surface of the leaf we can also observe stomata, these are tiny pores that allow for an exchange of materials. The mesophyll region is the area which is primarily responsible for photosynthesis. The barrel-shaped cells in the leaf are palisade mesophyll cells and it contains almost 80% of the leaf's chloroplast. The lower region will contain the spongy mesophyll cells and its cells also do contain man chloroplast. Lastly, the third region the veins are also observable throughout the mesophyll. They are surrounded by a layer of thick-walled cells which are called bundle sheath cells. Veins are also called the vascular bundle of the plant, which is further composed of xylem and phloem. Phloem will transport sugars and other carbohydrates throughout the plant. Water on the other hand is transported via the xylem. Thank you for watching this video, there will be more videos coming every week following this series of plant anatomy. Please subscribe for more videos.